All right, so welcome back. We are now coming to the end of the customer value optimization process. Just to kind of go all the way back to the beginning, we started with determining product market fit. We started out making sure that what we're selling is something that our market actually wants to buy. That was critical. And just being able to speak to that, speak to that ideal after, that desired end result in the form of a statement of value, that in and of itself can improve conversions and grow companies. Um, but we moved on and we, we got more tactical. And then that's where we talked about the lead magnet, the entry point of the funnel, and how by having a specific lead magnet, and in many cases, many specific lead magnets, we can not only broaden the funnel, but we can actually have multiple funnels into which leads and prospects can flow into. Uh, then we talked about the tripwire and how by lowering the barrier to entry, by making it as simple as possible to change that relationship, to, to, to go from being a lead or a prospect into a buyer, into a customer, and, and how that's important, you know, not just from a, yay, we got some money, but from a perspective of we're, we're increasing the commitment and the intimacy with the buyer. So that also is another aspect of the funnel that we can optimize to get more conversions and to get more sales. Then we went into the profit maximizer and we talked about how the different types of profit maximizers that you have available can all increase your margin, increase your profit and how that profit is crucial to growth because of the one kind of fundamental law of business growth, which is that he or she who is able and willing to spend the most to acquire a customer wins. So we got more leads, we've got more conversions, more customers, we increased the margin. Now it's time to handle all those people that you know came in and that, that signed up over here in the you know in the in, in the in the lead magnet. You know, what about those? And that's where the return path takes over. That's what we're talking about here, the return path. Because the fact is we know, we know that most sales don't occur on the first visit. We've been told this, right? And intuitively we know it, uh, but we've heard, I mean, anywhere from, it takes seven to 12 contacts to close a sale, depending on who you're talking to. Seven to 12, whether it's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, it doesn't matter. It, everybody agrees it's more than one. And so if you want to maximize your sales, if you want to grow your company, then you need to maximize the frequency at which you can get people to come back. Not just getting them to come back because they didn't buy the first time, but getting them to come back because they bought the first time and they need to buy a second, a third, a fourth, and a fifth time. And that's what the return path is all about. And that's why, frankly, you must follow up. And that's why we optimize the lead magnet back in step two. By optimizing the lead magnet, we have as many leads as possible to follow up with. Also by optimizing the tripwire and by optimizing our core offer, when we determine product market fit, we optimize the number of buyers that we can follow up with and hopefully get them to become multi-buyers. So you can see how each step has built upon another. You can see how by tweaking this and tweaking that and tweaking that, the end result what we get, even, even small little changes, even if we don't double, uh, the end result is significant. But the big point that I want to make about follow-up and the return path is that it's not just email. Email today is what most of us think of when it comes to the return path, but it's not just email. The return path is actually made up of four different types. There's just constant strategic communication, always being there. Right? Always being there, always being top of mind, um, not letting them forget about you. That's a big part of the return path. We'll talk about some ways to do that. There's exit offers, you know, specifically what happens when they arrive and then to your, to your website and then they start to leave. Can you make them an offer in that time? You should, and I'll give you some examples of some different types of exit offers that you could be making. There's also retargeting. Uh, retargeting and remarketing, if you're not familiar with that, it's a fairly uh, new traffic concept where when somebody comes to your website, you can have advertising, follow them all around the internet. If you aren't familiar with it uh, intellectually, you've probably experienced it and it'll be fun to talk about that and the role that it plays in the return path. And then of course, automated follow-up. The thing that everybody thinks of and the thing that I think we're probably better at than most, we're going to give you our system and even some examples for how to do that. So we have a lot to cover in this particular module. This is, out of all of them, probably my favorite because while the Profit Maximizer has the greatest opportunity to, to impact your profit margin, almost nothing will increase sales and the size of your business faster than this, faster than the return path. So with that, let's dive in and talk about the return path.